Hello and welcome uh, to the penultimate lecture on introduction to statistical hypothesis testing, where today we will look at hypothesis tests involving correlation and uh, certain other uh, factors such as uh, model parameters and the goodness of the model in linear regression. So, specifically we will look at test for correlation to begin with and then also learn what are the hypothesis tests in regression with of course, illustrations in R. Now, when I say regression here we are looking at linear regression where one is fitting a linear model between two or more variables. Uh, typically two variables are involved, one that you are predicting and the other that you are using for prediction. Now, the reason for including both these in the uh, same umbrella is because as we have studied earlier, correlation is a measure of linear dependence. Therefore, when we want to fit a linear model, it is generally wise to study the correlation between those two variables that you would like to model and then once the uh, correlation estimate passes the test of significance that is when we have determined statistically that there is a significant correlation between two variables then we proceed to fitting a uh, fit a linear model. Many uh, textbooks would perhaps present this in a different sequence that is talk about linear regression first and then talk about correlation. But it is practical to discuss correlation first and then talk about linear regression and that is why we have sequenced it in this manner. Of course, as I said earlier uh, at each stage we will show how to carry out this hypothesis test in R. So, let us begin with the estimation of correlation. Now, if you recall from early lectures in this course we have defined theoretically what is uh, correlation. Correlation is standardized covariance. Therefore, estimation of correlation will first require estimation of covariance. Uh, we have earlier seen how to estimate variance, where we have talked about two different estimators, one uh, which we call as S square n and the other which we call as S square n minus 1, that is how we denote it. And the difference between those two was while one was unbiased, the other was biased but then uh, one the one which had uh, 1 over n was more effi uh, efficient than the estimator the unbiased estimator which had 1 over n minus 1 uh, as the uh, factor uh, for estimation. Likewise here now covariance being a generalization of variance to two variable case we have at least two different ways of estimating covariance. These are uh, there are in general many different ways of estimating covariance, but the among the widely prevalent ones there are two estimators for estimating covariance of which I am uh, showing one of them <coughs> and this has a 1 over n in front of the summation. Ideally speaking this 1 over n is uh, that is the estimator that involves this 1 over n is a biased estimator. Nevertheless, we still use this widely to estimate covariance uh, of course, for several different reasons which we shall not go into at the moment. But regardless of whether you use a 1 over n or a 1 over n minus 1 or a 1 over n minus 2, the resulting estimate for correlation is not affected. So long as you use the same estimator for estimating covariance and also estimating variance. Let me explain that uh, briefly. So, what we mean here is here we are using an estimate uh, est uh, estimator for covariance which has this expression. Where x bar and y bar are our usual uh, sample means. Now, remember from the expression given on the slide an estimate of correlation is constructed in this fashion. And what I meant earlier was that whether you use a 1 over n or a 1 over n minus 2 or 1 over n minus 1, it does not influence the correlation estimate. So long as you use the same expression 
for estimating the standard deviations or the variances of x and y. That is if <coughs> so long as I estimate variance for example of x in this fashion and likewise for y as well. Of course, here i runs from 1 to n, i refers to the ith observation. Uh, so, you can clearly see that <coughs> once I take the square root of the variance of x and y, the whatever factor that I am using here would cancel out in the numerator and denominator. As a result, you would see in many texts this kind of an expression. Of course, all the summations run from i equals 1 to n and uh, we shall also see these kind of summations appearing later on in the optimal estimates of the parameters in linear regression. Definitely uh, as we have talked at the beginning of the lecture, there is a strong interconnection between correlation and linear regression and theref uh, therefore, you will see similar kind of summations uh, or terms appearing in linear regression, not necessarily identical. So, now uh, this is the correlation estimate that we are going to work with and naturally like we asked for any other estimate, we, uh, we would now try to uh, uh, set up a null hypothesis of the form for example, rho is equal to rho naught that is the uh, postulate being correlation uh, being identical to a pre-specified or a postulated value versus one of the alternative hypothesis for example, rho naught equal to rho naught. The typical kind of tests that we normally conduct for correlation which are called a significant uh, test is whether the, uh, uh, the observed correlation or the estimated correlation is significant or not in which case rho naught is 0. In fact, this is true for any parameter uh, estimate whenever we use the term significance test for some parameter, what we mean is uh, that the post the true parameter is 0 and whether the observed or whether the observed parameter estimate is significant, statistically significant. Now, uh, before we proceed to learn how to conduct this hypothesis test, clearly we know by now, uh, hopefully we are experts now in hypothesis testing. We know that to conduct a hypothesis test like this, I need the sampling distribution of the uh, so called sample correlation. And the difference between the hypothesis test, uh, sorry, the estimate that we have here versus let us say an estimate of mean is that this estimator or uh, estimate is a nonlinear function of the observation. So, we say that this is a nonlinear estimator of the uh, parameter which is correlation. Whereas, if you take sample mean, so if you take x bar, this is a linear estimator and it was uh, easy to derive the sampling distribution of x bar for, a, for instance using the central limit theorem. But here it is not so straightforward to derive the sampling distribution of correlation <coughs> given the distribution of x and y. Now, uh, knowing this difficulty, many researchers of course spent a lot of time several decades ago and came up with the distributional properties of the sample correlation under some restricted conditions and we will discuss those shortly and then proceed towards hypothesis test for correlation. There is also another point that I would just uh, likely uh, like to mention in passing which is that covariance is symmetric which means whether I write as a rho x uh, sigma x y or sigma y x it is one and the same and likewise for correlation as well. The ordering does not matter we have already discussed this in the uh, lecture on correlation. So, as we just discussed the uh, properties or the sampling distribution of the uh, sample correlation coefficient is not easy to obtain. So, 
the distributional properties have been arrived at or have been known under some restricted conditions. However, as an estimator the sample correlation that we have on the board or on the slide is asymptotically unbiased. Now, we need this uh, in fact, it is also unbiased not necessarily asymptotically unbiased only and consistent estimator. If you recall unbiased would mean on the average the estimator gives you the truth and consistent would mean that as the sample size grows large the estimates converge to truth in a statistical sense or a probabilistic sense. All right. So, having assured that, that assurance is necessary for us to conduct hypothesis test or use this estimator to uh, test correlations. Now, let us move on to the distributional property. When x and y have a joint Gaussian distribution or a bivariate Gaussian distribution, you should recall in one of the lectures we had written the expression for joint Gaussian distribution where we, uh, we talked about the difference between correlation and independence. So, if you refer to those, uh, that lecture, you will see the expression for a bivariate Gaussian distribution. When x and y have a bivariate Gaussian distribution and when the sample size is large and when the true correlation is 0. So, you can see that uh, there are quite a few restrictions here. Of course, some of these are standard. You may argue that even in the case of variance, we stated the sampling distribution of variance under the normality assumption only. But the large sample assumption was not really necessary there. But further we have now two different scenarios depending on what the true correlation is. If the true correlation is 0, of course, we do not know that. But what this means is if I am performing a hypothesis test of the form rho equals 0, then I should use this sampling distribution. If I am performing a hypothesis test of the form rho not equal to 0, then I may have to use a different sampling distribution. So, let us look at the first case when the true correlation uh, is uh, 0, then <coughs> under the last sample assumption a nice result falls out which is that the sample correlation falls a, uh, follows a Gaussian distribution with mean 0 that is it is uh, unbiased because that is the truth and variance 1 over n. That means it has a standard error of 1 over root n where n is the usual sample size. However, when the sample size is large, the sampling distribution of rho hat deviates from Gaussianity and uh, instead follows a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. This n minus 2 degrees of freedom comes about because we have used uh, 2 degrees of freedom in estimating the sample means x bar and y bar. You can think of it that way. Uh, so, depending on whether your sample size is small or, la or large, you can use one of these distributions. In fact, if you try to use a small sample expression for large sample case, you would not be making much of an error because we know that the t distribution tends to a Gaussian as n becomes large and n minus 2 tends to n. So, that is not an issue. Uh, but on the other hand, if you were to use the large sample uh, expression for the distribution for small sample size, there is a big scope for making an error. So, just be careful. Now, moving on to the case of the true correlation being not 0. <coughs> Again, we would not know that, but when you are performing a hypothesis test of rho not equal to 0, one uh, has to work with a sampling distribution not for the correlation, but for a transformed correlation. In fact, it turns out that this was a tough problem to crack. But finally, uh, Fisher came up with this idea of working with the transformed coefficient and showed that this transformation given in equation 4 half ln of 1 plus rho hat or 1 minus rho hat follows now uh, this transformation or transformed coefficient follows a Gaussian distribution with mean mu f and variance sigma square f where the expressions for mu f and sigma square f are given. <coughs> Here the uh, variance expression is 1 over n minus 3. I would not go into the details of this uh, derivation you can find in good rigorous statistical text as a derivation of this. Uh, 
<coughs> or refer to of course Fisher's original paper. So the uh, point is or the summary is when the true correlation is not equal to 0, the Fisher's transform coefficient follows an approximately Gaussian distribution. This is only true for the large sample case. <coughs> of course, um, you would not be again making a, a big error by using this even when the true correlation is 0, but then when a simple result exists for the large sample case, why would you want to work with a transformed uh, coefficient. Therefore, all tests of significance for correlation would either use the small sample expression in uh, equation 3, uh, sorry e the small sample expression in equation 3 or the large sample expression as the case may be. But when you are testing for the true correlation being uh, rho, something of rho not equal to 0 like 0.1 or minus 0.2 and so on, then you would want to use the expressions in 4 and 5. Now having said that typically what is of interest is the first one that is a significance test that is that the true correlation is 0. If it is found that the uh, post null hypothesis rho equals 0 is has to be rejected then one fits a linear model and then uh, one is interested more in uh, the goodness of the model fits and so on. It is of course uh, it is there are situations in which you may postulate that the true correlation is 0.1 and 0.2 and so on but relatively those are rare compared to the significance test for correlation so something to keep in mind. All right, so let us look at an example now and see also how we can do this in R. This is a example that we discussed in the motivating lecture. Recall that there, there was a widespread belief that there is a relation between the cranial circumference that is the circumference of the, uh, the head here and the finger length. Uh, this uh, kind of belief was held for a few uh, centuries. And now we want to see if there is a linear relation between the cranial circumference and finger length. So for this purpose what we would do is we would randomly select a few individuals, record their cranial circumference and the finger length and then now uh, put uh, determine the correlation between these two parameters because we are interested in a linear relation. To test for nonlinear relations request test for independence but that is beyond the scope of this course. Let us now uh, pull up the data for the cranial circumference and finger length and compute the correlation coefficient. Let us see if this uh, belief actually holds any waters. For this what you do is you uh, use the routines COR and COR.test. Of course, you can straight away use COR.test uh, COR which implements the uh, test for significance using the small sample expression that I gave earlier. If you only want to compute the correlation coefficient of course you can then use COR. So the data is again contained in uh, a data file that we will upload on the web and you can also work along with me. Let us now uh, turn to R, make sure we are in the working directory. So this is the date, <coughs> some of these data sets we have worked with earlier. The one that is of interest to us is the, uh, we need to change the working directory here. and we have changed the working directory to the file pane uh, location. Now we can load the <coughs> data file. The name of the file is uh, cran underscore finlen dot r data and I am going to load that which will lo uh, load a variable called cranfing. It is a list variable and it has 
these attributes and attributes of interest to us are the uh, cranial circumference and the uh, finger length. Of course, a good idea <coughs> would be to plot the data points, uh, uh, draw a scatter plot of the <coughs> finger length versus the cranial circumference Hosey-Foot plot. So, this is uh, how the plot looks like and what we are postulating is that there is a linear relationship that is what uh, is the equivalence of saying that I would like to see if there is a non-zero correlation. We are not so much worried about whether the correlation is positive or negative. We just want to know if the uh, there exists a significant correlation between these two variables. Of course, one can just to make things simple we can assign x uh, cran fing instead of typing all the time these parameters. <coughs> we can assign the cranial circumference to x and likewise the finger length to y. Good. So, now we, we can ask for correlation between x and y and it turns out to be 0 0.2157 and so on. Now, of course, this is an estimate and we know from our prior experiences that the face value of the estimate does not necessarily tell us anything about the truth and that is why we turn to the hypothesis test. So, let us now ask the core dot test the on the results of this uh, hypothesis test. All right. So, on the top you see that it displays Pearson's product moment correlation. In fact, the correlation that we are working with is called the Pearson's correlation. There are two other forms of correlation that are widely used, Kendall correlation and Spearman's correlation. We do not discuss those correlation measures here. You can refer to any standard statistical text. Okay. So, it says data that has been used is x and y and it reports the uh, t statistic, the degrees of freedom. Notice that we have 16 uh, data points and from our previous expression we said the correlation estimate for the small sample case under the bivariate Gaussian assumption. We do not know if that is true, but let us assume that the data falls out of a bivariate Gaussian distribution. Ha, uh, then in that case the statistic has n minus 2 degrees of freedom and that is why the degrees of freedom is 14. And one can either use a critical value approach or the p value approach. Let us take the p value approach, it is a lot easier. We know that when the p value is low, lower than the significance uh, level, the significance level that we have used in the standard thing is 0 0.05 as usual. And uh, when the p value is less than uh, alpha, but in, here it is a two sided test. So, you will have alpha by 2 to the left and right, but overall the p value if it is less than alpha, then the null hypothesis must go, must, must be rejected. Here the p value is greater than alpha. Yeah, of course, I can say much greater, but it does not make any difference. As the moment the p value is greater than alpha, I have to, I fail to reject the null hypothesis and therefore, the null hypothesis that the true correlation is 0 fails to be rejected, which means most likely the truth is that the true correlation is 0. All right. Of course, we will see this in a different way when we fit a linear model. Suppose I did not perform a test of correlation and instead I went ahead and fit a linear uh, model using standard uh, least squares method then I should be able to see the same thing. That is even the hypothesis tests in linear regression that I conduct on model parameters or the goodness of model should reveal the same thing that look you should not have fit a model. Because the true correlation is 0, there is no evidence to believe that a linear model will uh, do a good job. And then of course, you also have the confidence intervals here for the correlation 
parameter. Now, again this confidence intervals are derived in the same way as we derived for the sample mean, ratio of variances, proportions and so on. You can start with the distribution, write a probabilistic interval for the correlation estimate and then from there derive the uh, expression for the correlation coefficient that is a confidence interval for the correlation coefficient. If you look at the confidence interval, it includes 0 which is one of the which is the postulated value and therefore, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. On the other hand, if the you look at the correlation coefficient for another data set that we will look at uh, shortly in the context of linear regression which is the data set that we talked about in the motivation lecture the highway uh, mileage versus engine capacity. In that case, the confidence interval would not include a 0. So, let us do that in a minute here. Let me load the data here which is con contained in mile underscore inch dot r data. If you do that and conduct a correlation test in uh, now the variable is x data this is also list variable and <coughs> we want to uh, con compute the correlation between the engine capacity and the highway mileage. I will explain these variable names at a later stage, but let us for the sake of illustration uh, compute the uh, perform the test on these two variables here highway mileage uh, variable 2 and the sorry the <coughs> engine capacity in fact here we should use does not matter because it is symmetric nevertheless we want to be. Uh, sticking to the conventions here. Two. Now, when we perform this kind of a correlation here, something interesting comes up. Of course, there are certain defaults that we have used in this correlation dot test. For example, we have assumed the significance level to be 0 0.05. We have assumed that the alternate hypothesis is of two sided type and so on. That is what we are interested in always in a significance test. Now, the null hypothesis again for this case also is that the true correlation between the highway mileage and engine capacity is 0. You can either use the p value approach or the confidence interval approach both are telling us that the null hypothesis has to be rejected because the true value postulated true value which is 0 is not contained in the confidence interval. In fact, you can see that both the bounds are actually negative indicating a negative correlation. Of course, if you want to now test for negative correlation, we'll, you have to go and change the alternative which I will do at a later stage. In fact, the linear regression will tell us that there is a negative correlation between these two variables. You can also look at the p value, it is very small. In fact, of course, it is smaller than alpha and therefore, once again the null hypothesis has to be rejected. So, these are this is just a confirmation of what we had observed using the confidence interval. Now, these two examples hopefully have given you a fair idea of how to conduct a correlation test uh, in R and of course, the uh, theory behind it. In the next part of this lecture, we will talk about linear regression a bit more in detail and look at the various tests that are involved in uh, standard linear regression. Okay?